This is Abe Friedtanzer from Awards Watch, and I'm thrilled to be speaking with Eric Lopez, star of the Oscar-nominated short film, Please Hold. How are you today, Eric? Doing well, doing well. Thanks for having me. Of course, thanks for being here. I'm a big fan of your work uh, as Hector on Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. <laughs> and yeah, so it was, yeah, yeah. it was great to be able to see you uh, in this short. How did you uh, first find out about this project and become attached to it? Uh, I remember, you know, it was during, during uh, COVID, I believe, uh, 2020, and they, um, Katie uh, and, and the team had reached out to my agents and I got an email saying, hey, this, uh, this short wants to see if you're available for this. I read the short. I read, um, you know, their background, all, all the producers involved with it. And I was just like, wow, it's like this team is like an all-star cast, you know. Um, <laughs> a little microphone fell out there. Uh, but I was like, I was just shocked because I was like, this this felt almost too good to be true, uh, especially with the story being told. Uh, I, you know, it was, it's, a, it's a story that hit home for me personally because I uh, had personally gone through, you know, especially nowadays with, with everything that was going on, it was like almost perfect timing of uh, the whole social justice and, and uh, making sure that people of color get a fair shot in the justice system as well. And, you know, I love technology. I love like the whole idea of like Black Mirror and uh, the future stuff. So I, I was really surprised to, to see the script and be like, wow, this is like everything I love all in one and things that I'm passionate about and things that are timely. So uh, that, yeah, that's how I found out about it. Did a meeting with Katie and yeah, the rest is history. That's great. And I think it is really cool how the, the uh, film looks at the future and the idea of automation and how that really takes out whatever leftover humanity we still have. <laughs> yeah, you, that's the thing that's yeah. wild with, with automation. I mean, you see it right now. It's like people have, there's errors whenever people are uh, going through the justice system, whether it's paperwork errors or whether it's, you know, identifying errors. And it's a real thing that like people hopefully will open their eyes to even more seeing the film and be like, oh, this could actually really happen. We, we need to make sure that uh, this doesn't happen in the future. Of course. And it is still funny at certain points. Would you call it a comedy or is it just like a very, very dark comedy? That, that's a good point. Yeah, actually, I've been telling people it's a sci-fi comedy. So I think that's a that sci-fi dark. Yeah, a, a dark sci-fi comedy uh, just to get people prepared. And the, the best thing I can compare it to would, would have been like Black Mirror in certain areas. Yeah. Funny. Well, it's funny because there's actually there's a new film on Netflix from Jean-Pierre Genet who made Amelie uh, called Big Bug, which just premiered very recently. And it also is a sci-fi comedy that's technology based. They're like, I'm not sure I could have found anything to compare this film to, but that's a very favorable comparison. Uh, yeah, I'll so have to like, check it out. Definitely something <laughs> worth looking at. What is the process of working on a short film like as compared with a feature film or, or a TV show? I mean, working on this, it, it was interesting because whenever we, uh, whenever we were kind of blocking everything out beforehand, like they did an amazing job doing the set. Like they built a total jail cell, everything, attention to detail was amazing. Um, but really just taking the same approach of being mindful of, of kind of pacing yourself. I think since it's uh, almost 20 minutes of just basically me in a jail cell, uh, just figuring out moments where uh, where you want to kind of like slow play it and then just kind of be like discovering, especially a lot of stuff in the jail cell and then finding new things, especially when you're in a tight space, like as an actor, it's like, there's only so much you can do. So you have to like, you can't use this area too much right here. You can't use that area. It's, it has to be like a natural discovery for the character. Um, and I've never, I've never had to, fortunately never been to jail, but it's, it, I, I've been in a small space for a long time because, you know, moving to LA, having a studio apartment growing up, it like it, whenever I first moved out here, you know, you're like in a small space, you're like, okay, I know what it's like to be confined and you want to get out. And this is like, you want to get out of here. And I assume there's an added dimension to this during the pandemic of the idea of just being like trapped in one space. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Just channeling everything into into that uh, into that moment. So the film is 20 minutes, but there's obviously more to this story. Is a feature film something that's coming in the future? That is the goal. That is the goal. Uh, you know, hopefully I can't speak for the team, but, you know, I know that everyone has uh, high hopes and ambitions to tell this uh, story out, you know, in a, in a longer form, because there's just so much, so many, so many details like beforehand, like what was his life beforehand and, and going into the family aspect of it. And we don't really see too many, uh, too, too many Latino leads in like, in like uh, sci-fi kind of like, you know, 
kind of kind of films. And I think that was really a really cool thing that if we can bring that into a feature film length and get this into theaters and get more people on it, like it'll it'll inspire a whole new generation of people being like, oh, cool. Like, you know, we can make, you know, more Latinos making these kind of films, right? That's great. And I don't know if you're familiar with the other nominees in the Oscar category, but this is the only American film, which is actually pretty common that very often there's a lot of international fare. Do you think there's something distinctly American about this story? Yeah, you know, whenever I found out uh, about that, like I saw when we got Oscar uh, shortlisted, I was like, oh, we're the only American film. I was like, that's kind of wild, you know? And then I started thinking about it. And it's like, what was it about this story that resonates? And it's, and it's interesting because it's like, I think that we were, we were able to tell a story that, uh, you know, the, the rest of the, the other nominees did an amazing job and they each kind of tell something, especially with like Riz Ahmed, it's like, you know, the long goodbye, it's like something particular to their culture and something that at least I feel personally, maybe it's like this around the world, but in, in America, there is a sense of, um, kind of whenever there's a race, like there's different colors, like you know, whenever people, whenever police misidentify or they just assume, uh, it happens. It happens, and it's happened to me too. Like I, I remember uh, whenever I was a teenager, I was driving uh, my my car and my girlfriend driving, and then I got pulled over, and I was like, "What's going on?" He, and he didn't want to tell me, and he was just all like, "Where, you know, uh, where'd you get this car?" And I'm like, "This is mine." And he's all like, "Oh yeah, how'd you pay for it?" And then he just questioned and questioned, like, was just like. I was like, is there, is there a reason why you pulled me over? And he started looking around my car. He's like, you don't have a front license plate. And I was like, you probably just made that up right now. I don't know. So it, 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 was, a, it was a moment where I felt that it was like the first time that I, I realized that um, this is probably going to affect me later on in the future. But just like the short film, in the short film, uh, you know, he tries to, to keep a level head and keep moving forward. And like, like Americans, you know, we, we still have things that we need to work through, but we're going to keep on moving forward. And in the technology side, same thing. There's going to be errors that come up. People are going to get mistaken and we just got to keep on moving forward. And I think that's like the American kind of uh, tradition of like, hey, we're going to be the first ones to push through technology. Oh, cool. Like we have this new technology that does things and we, we're doing, we're like one of the first ones to do this and we're going to have mistakes and we're just going to figure out a way to keep on moving forward and learn from them. That makes a lot of sense. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me today. I, I, hope, that, sure. I hope that we'll get to see a, a feature film at some point and good luck in the Oscar race. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Appreciate it. Yeah, <laughs> fingers crossed. Nice to meet you. Thanks a lot.